Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you ready to praise God with me today? It's Sunday morning, this vision 182 is my pastor Rich. And we're gonna praise God together. Get up on your feet and give God a shout of praise in this place. God is gonna do something special in our lives today. Come on, let's sing a song of worship together. You ready? Here we go. I'm expecting a miracle. Signs and wonders I will see. God is moving with power here. I'm expecting a miracle today. I'm expecting a miracle today. Can you hear you say a miracle? miracle. Signs and wonders. I will see it. God is moving with power here. I'm expecting. I'm expecting a miracle. Here we go. Let it overflow, overflow. His promises, yes, amen. I promise I'm my turn around. I'm expecting a miracle today. I'm expecting a miracle today. First, he says, I've been praying. For a while, pressing on for what is mine, but God is moving with power here. I'm expecting an answer today. I'm expecting an answer today. Can you sing it with me? Say, I've been praying for a while, pressing on for what is mine, but God. Moving with power here. <laughs> I'm expecting an answer today. I'm expecting an answer today. Oh, let it overflow, overflow. His promises, yes, amen. I prophesy on oh, my turn around. I'm expecting an answer. I'm expecting a miracle. One more time. Let it overflow, overflow. His promises, yes, and amen. I prophesy, hey, my turn on fire. I'm expecting an answer. I'm expecting a miracle today. All right. Right about now, I need you to put off your religious things. Get off in your dancing shoes. Get on your dancing shoes right now. Kick off the morning slippers and get ready to praise God with me. Oh, so it goes like this. Say, my heart and soul just so I unali mak modi moak. Yeah, my heart and soul just so I. a shout of praise right there where you are my God Father we lift up our hands and we just remember 
the blood at the cross this morning the sacrifice of Jesus Christ right there where you are would you just begin to worship God for what he has done sending his son to die on the cross the song simply speaks about the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice at Gethsemane where he chose to do the will of the Father Sirongo Musa Owenzuweyo Ekezema Ekezema Sirongo Musa Owenzuweyo Ekezema Jesus Ekezema
catch him out They catch him out See more to try All in the way And catch him out And catch him out See more to Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you this morning. Thank you for the sacrifice. Today we say you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the praise. There's none like you, oh God. You alone deserve all honor. You alone deserve our praise, oh God. We lift you up right there. We are. Would you begin to worship God? Would you begin to give him your highest praise? I want to speak to that thing in your life. I want to minister to you right now. Right there where you're standing in the presence of God. Understand the Bible says that in the presence of God, there is liberty. There's deliverance. Deliverance means to be free, to be rescued from bondage. And God wants to deliver you today. There's some of you struggling in your finances. You're struggling in your marriage. You're struggling in your relationships. You're struggling with sickness in your physical body. The answer is the same. No matter what the problem is, the answer is the same. And his name is Jesus. Would you lift up your hands right now and let's begin to put our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. I want you to relax. I want you to let go right now. Relax. Forget about, forget about everything. Focus on Jesus. His mercy for you. His love for you. He knows you. He wants you. He is for you. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. The Bible says, If God, if God be for us. That's a question. If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but willingly gave him up for us all. Won't he now with him freely give us all things? If God gave you Jesus, if he gave you heaven's best, what will he withhold from you today? So right now, receive healing in that situation. In your body right now, I, I speak healing. Complete healing. Pain, go. Complication in your blood, in your blood, go. That complication in your bladder, go now in Jesus' name. That cancer, I commanded to leave. God is healing you of your back. Somebody experiencing a severe back pain. Neck pain starting all the way from your neck down your back. God is healing you right now in Jesus' name. God is preserving you now. That baby is being preserved now in Jesus' name. Let go of fear. Let go of fear. God is preserving you right now in Jesus' name. Your marriage is being preserved. Your business is being preserved. Forget about what the news said. Forget about what CNN said. Forget about what SABC News said. Listen to the good news. God is preserving you no matter your situation. If you believe that miracle is yours, just begin to give God thanks where you are. Come on, just give, begin to give him thanks where you are. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that it is done. Hallelujah. Praise your name. We praise your name. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you, Lord God. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for new jobs. Thank you for new contracts. Thank you, Lord, for new bodies, new body parts. Thank you for new marriages. Lord God, restored marriages. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, restored families, preserved families. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, God. We honor you, God. Thank you, Jesus. It is done now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of God where you are. And as you take your seats, we want to welcome you. If you're joining us for the very first time, 
um, streaming live with us from um, won't you just let us know in the comment section just say hey it's my first time here good to be with you and uh, send us just um, send us see there's an email address right at the bottom send us an email at pastor rich online at gmail.com pastor rich online gmail.com let us know who you are and just so we can connect to you and pray for you where you are right now we're gonna give unto the lord our tithes and our offering today because um, the bible teaches us that as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest remains there is always an opportunity for us to give God is always in the business of blessing his people. But understand that as long as you withhold your seed, God has no business blessing your business. I'll say it again. If you withhold your seed, God has no business being involved in your business. Your seed gives God the right to be involved in your finances. As much as God loves you, God is a gentleman. As, as powerful as God is, there's something that God will not do and God will never override your will. Your seed is an indication of your will. What you give is an indication of your trust in God. And truly, it's not so much that people don't, uh, many times people say, I, I don't want to give because I don't trust that ministry. It's not that you don't trust that ministry. Many times that people don't trust God. You know, wh when you understand that giving is a trust, when you understand that when you're giving, you're giving to a God who's not poor. You're giving to a God who's not poor, who's not struggling. You're giving to a God who gives who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can ask, think, or imagine. And you are, secondly, you never give to a church. No one has ever given to a church. You don't give to a church, you give through a church. You don't give to a ministry, you give through a ministry. It, this is the channel with which you can access the blessings of God for your life. When you are giving into this ministry, you're not giving into this ministry, you're giving through this ministry. That every person that we touch with the gospel of Jesus Christ, every person that is healed, every person that gets delivered, every person that gets saved, every child that gets fed, you have a part, you're a partaker in that blessing and it abounds on your account. Let me tell you something. Where we are living now, this is the practice run. Earth is not the final destination. This is the preseason. This is the warm-up game. We're going somewhere. And where we are going, the Bible says, you store up treasures for yourself through the seed that you give. Store for yourselves treasures in heaven. Release your seed. I remember when my wife and I were struggling um, to conceive our third baby. And we, we had two miscarriages. We had two um, in, 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 in successive years. Two miscarriages at 15 weeks. And it was a painful situation. And the thing, I, I, I had prayed. I had fasted. I had prayed. I had confessed. I had declared. I had bound the devil. I had done everything that I knew how to do as a pastor and as a man of God to, to make sure this never happens again. And in heartbreak, I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me and said, there are some things in your life that only a seed will speak for. There are some places where your voice cannot speak. Only your seed can speak. I remember I gave, it was a Sunday morning, and I, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to give my entire salary today. And, I, and in spite of the debts, in spite of whatever debt orders were going to come, it doesn't matter, I'm going to give everything. And when I did that, let me tell you, it wasn't immediate. It wasn't like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, she fell pregnant and it never happened again. No, what happened is that that opened the gate for a new way of thinking and a new level of faith. I accessed a different dimension through my seed. It's almost like if you've ever watched The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, or if you ever read the books, when he opens that door, it's a completely different world. What was blue this side is red this side. What was down this side is up this side. And your giving opens that dimension. You step into a different dimension. You cannot even explain words. You see, the goodness that God has was, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, words cannot explain. Words have not been invented to explain what God has in store for us. And your giving opens up that dimension. Are you ready to give? Father, I bless the seed that they give. Increase and multiply. Provide for their needs. In Jesus' name, I rebuke the devourer. Bring that answer. Bring that miracle. Let it come to pass now. In Jesus' name, you may give unto the Lord. God bless you. Oh, 
Welcome back, this is Pastor Rich. I'm glad you enjoyed the time of worship. I know you enjoyed the time of worship that we had. And uh, we're going to get into the Word of God very shortly. If you got your Bible next to you, please get your Bible. Um, I'll wait for you. Um, it's, it's in the bedroom. It's next to the nightstand. Some of you, maybe it's in the bookcase collecting dust. I'll wait. Go get it. No, I'm kidding. I know you got your Bible right, right the way you are. We're in the book of Psalms 91 this, this morning, this afternoon, for those of you who are watching at a later time. Um, in Psalms 91, this is the prayer of protection that we are dealing with. We've been dealing with for the past two weeks in the prayer of protection and really being able to manifest the protection of God in our lives. Understand that the goodness of God is available for all. The goodness, the mercy of God, the allness of God is available for us. But not everybody accesses that goodness of God. It's not everybody who walks in this, this what has, God has made available. For example, God has brought salvation to all mankind. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he made salvation available to everyone. Yet not everybody is saved. When he was whipped 39 times, he made healing available to everybody. Yet not everybody is healed. When he was born, he was made poor that through his poverty we might become rich. Yet not everybody is rich. So there's something wrong. There's a disconnect. It's God has already made available and released all this goodness. What is the problem? I, last night, my wife and I were standing in the kitchen and we're just chatting and talking and we're sharing some things that God has been dealing with us in our lives. And I said to her, babe, you know, I'm praying for certain things. I was praying for certain things. And, and I'm praying earnestly, Lord God, I, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And it's like the Holy Spirit said, I don't have it. Now, you, you, must, you must understand how shocked that, you know, when you're praying and you're seeking God and you're in the presence of God, the music is going, the, the goosebumps are there, everything is there. You know, you are in the presence, in the glory. And it's like I could feel the Holy Spirit saying, I don't have it. What do you mean you don't have you you're god you're the holy spirit you're it you're the alpha the omega the Alpha. should die more than enough if you don't have it who has it and the holy spirit started impressing in my heart i don't have it because i've already released it listen he said i don't have it because i've already given it there's no more i've given it already many times we ask god for things that he has already given and so my prayer was lord lord i thank you that you give me that thing i thank you that i claim it i name it and that sounds like a great prayer it sounds like the way we should pray but that is not the way that god wants us to pray listen to what jesus said jesus said when you pray father what's in heaven have be thy name you give us this day our daily bread in other words, the daily bread is already given. He's not even asking God, Lord, would you please give us a day? He says, you give us our daily bread. And the New Living Translation says, you give us our daily bread. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, when you pray, believe that you have already be received it and it shall be yours. He says, when you pray, believe that it is, you've received it and it shall be yours. Wait, if I've already received it, then how come I'm still praying for it? Because the kind of prayer we're talking about here is not a prayer where you're begging God to do things that he's already done. We're not trying to get God to do things he's already done. So the Holy Spirit said to me, I don't have it. He says, I've already given it to you. I've already released it. The prayer you should be praying now, this is the prayer. It is the prayer of calling that thing to come and commanding it to manifest into your life. So we're not praying, oh Lord, would you protect me? No, God has released his protection upon our lives. The prayer we are praying is where we are calling the protection of God to make itself manifest in our lives. Oh, glory. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. The Bible says that angels are ministering spirits for ministering spirits for those who would inherit salvation ministering spirits for those who would inherit salvation i always thought it said they are ministering spirits to those who would inherit salvation no but the bible says that angels are ministering spirits for those who would inherit salvation which means that if there were two it means they had been sent on a specific mission to do something in our lives they had been sent by god to but it says there are ministering spirits for those who wouldn't have, which means now that they, had, they are waiting for the command on what to do in your life. Angels are standing at attention, awaiting at what should be done in your life today. 
Psalms 103 verse 20, the Bible says, they hearken the voice of the word of God. When you speak the word and you give voice to the word of God, angels listen and pay attention and get ready to do what you declare and command in the name of Jesus. I know that's going to blow a lot of people's minds there, but we are not asking God, oh Lord, protect me. That is a religious prayer. That is a, it's a false religion. It's a false humility prayer. That is a, a it's a dead religious prayer that means nothing oh god would you protect no no god has already afforded us his protection by the blood of jesus so now what do we do now we need to step in and command the protection of god to come into being see this is difficult when you don't understand who you are that's why we're in psalms 91 we're going to get into psalms 91 in a way that you've never heard it before because psalms 91 many times has been preached as if it's this exclusive place uh, exclusive uh, scripture for only a specific few who are able to access this protection who are able to access the secret place but I want to show you today that God has already placed you in the secret place amen father thank you for the word we thank you that you bless your word today in Jesus name amen and amen let's get into the word he who dwells in the shelter of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord listen so here we go he who dwells in the shelter of the most high shall rest the bible says shall rest the word is rest i believe the hebrew word is the word yabash it's the word rest the key to accessing the presence of god is to rest for some christians that's the most difficult thing to do is to rest is just to let go is just to trust god is to allow god to be god in your life but he says he who he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty and the key word he says he who dwells it's the word yabash it's the word to sit down it's the word to be seated in the shelter he who is seated in the shelter of the most high where are you seated today i want to show you where you're seated today so the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 the bible says that christ has been has been raised up and is seated at the right hand of the father but understand that right before that it says that we are in christ you are already in christ as a child of god number one today you are in christ god has made you righteous and he has put you in christ if christ is seated at the right hand of god you in christ are seated at the right hand of god oh my god that is big does that sound like blasphemy to some of you some of you don't like that like the pastor you can't be talking like that we no 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 christ is there and we are all the way down here somewhere at the bottom groveling underneath no see the problem is you keep looking at your sin you keep looking at what you're doing you keep looking at your doings and think that your doings determine your being your doings do not determine your being it's your being that should determine your doings oh glory to jesus the anointing of god is here if you're being blessed just comment on the comment section just say, I'm, I'm i'm receiving something but if we are in christ in my jacket right now i've got my cell phone my cell phone is in my jacket right now i am seated on this chair now where i'm seated my jacket or my phone is seated if i stand up it stands up with me if you are in christ where christ is so are you as long as christ is seated at the right hand of the father the place of authority you are seated right there with him that's why he says he who dwells you gotta learn to dwell you gotta learn to stay if you let's jump over to ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 the bible says that we have been raised up with christ you know that one i gotta go to because i just think some of you are some of us are a little doubting are you still with there are you still with me there we're going to the book of ephesians chapter 2 listen to what the bible says my eyes are blurry from all these lights verse 5 it says he made us alive together with christ even when we were dead in our transgressions nobody has a problem with that with that no one has a problem with us saying god has made us alive together with christ that we are, we were made alive we were dead in our transgressions as a matter of fact some of you feel the anointing you feel what you think is the anointing when i say we were dead in our trespass uh, yes pastor i was dead in my trans trespass yes we all were we were dead in our transgressions but listen and by grace you have been saved and god 
raised us up together with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places. You see that? Not only are we in Christ, but we are seated with him. God has seated us with Christ in heavenly places. Um, whenever I cast out demons, whenever we cast out demons and deliverance and the casting out of demons is something that God has really marked our ministry with, my wife and I, and people would always, I, I, would, have, I would have, listen, I would have pastors call me and say, Pastor Rich, please come help us cast out this demon. We've been praying for so long and it's not working. You know one of the reasons that demons will listen to you? Demons are not so much interested in, um, they're not interested in, listen to me carefully, or listen to me with mature ears. It's not so much about how much you pray. It's not even about that. Praying is important. It really is. You need to pray. It's not even about whether you're a pastor or a leader or you're a cell leader or you're a musician. It's got nothing to do with that. But the authority that you have in the spiritual realm is determined by your sense of identity. Who do you think you are? I remember there was this man, he had about 20 demons in him. He had come from a, an Eastern religion, an Eastern religion, and uh, he had like 20 demons in him, and uh, he had, was manifesting each one. Like, he would, then he, first he was a monkey, then he was a snake on the floor, and then he was a baboon, and then he was uh, a gorilla. He was just all these kinds of animals that were coming out on the inside. And they had been struggling with him all night. They told me for 12 hours they'd been praying and nothing happened. And when I, when I stepped, when I stepped into the room, before I even stepped into the room, I was told that he already could sense that I'm coming. And when I stepped into the room, he began to, he began to squirm like a little worm running away. And they asked me, okay, why does he do that when you come? Do you pray more, more than us? I said, no. I said, because I understand who I'm in. The thing is, I understand that I'm in Christ. That even when I sin, I'm sinning in Christ. <gasps> Did you get that? Even when I fall, I fall in Christ. I can never fall out of Christ. I am seated in Christ. I am dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. It doesn't matter what I do. Listen carefully. It's not about my doings. My doings don't determine my being. My being is in Christ. And as long as Christ is seated on the throne, I'm seated with him. If Christ were to be removed from the throne, if Christ were to be removed from the right hand of the Father, then my righteousness would fail. Because my righteousness is not of myself. My righteousness is of God. As long as Christ is righteous, so am I. As he is in heaven, so am I on earth. And that authority, that sense of identity gives you authority. That when you step into the workplace, everybody can notice that there's something different about you. There's something different about the way you carry yourself. You might be the tea lady at work, but there's something different about the way you see yourself. That even your mistakes are taken with favor. Even when you are not qualified for positions, God enables you to step into higher position and you are promoted not because of what you do but because of what of your being because you are in christ you are in the shelter you dwell in the shelter of the most high god hallelujah come on just shout if you're glad if you are glad that you are dwelling in the secret place you are dwelling now obviously if god has given us all these things how are they activated there's a way in which we activate the promises of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the promises of God are yes and are yes and the amen is said by us. The promises of God are yes and the amen is said by us. In other words, his promises are available. His promises have been released, but you got to say the amen. You need to let it be. You need to say let it be in our lives. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. 
the heavens and the earth in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 the bible says the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the face of the deep verse 3 and the spirit of god was hovering over the oh was hovering was brooding the word brooding like a like a chicken broods over her, 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 her eggs the spirit of god was brooding over that understand that even though the spirit of god was brooding over the earth it was still dark it was still damp it was still useless nothing was happening even though the spirit was there and many christians are like that today you have the spirit of god but your life is still empty your life is still void your life is still useless your life is still dark nothing good is happening why because you have the presence of of god there but something happened in verse 3 then the bible says and then god said it's the moment that he said that the word ran into the spirit and creation took place the moment you release you open up your word to speak the word that's when activation takes place so that's why we can look at psalm we go back to the book of psalms chapter 91 we're in the book of psalm chapter 91 listen to what it says now he says verse 2 i will say of the lord i'm dwelling in the secret place of the most high i'm abiding under his shelter i'm in, in i'm in intimacy with god and that's very key your intimacy with god is key you got to be intimate with god and not as a matter of religion, not as a matter of uh, if I don't do it, something bad's going to happen to me. But because you love God, if you have a problem with being intimate with God, you don't then you don't love God. You know, if you have a problem with being intimate with God, then don't go to heaven because you're going to be bored there. If worship is a problem for you, heaven is not the place for you. If you can't wait for worship to end so you can sit down or go home. In church then you have a serious problem you don't know who God is so intimacy with God is the place where we where where it's like the fire gets wood you know it's, it's the place where substance is given when I'm with God in the word and yielding to him when you when you're with him it gives substance to your faith it gives substance to your declaration that your words are not just words, but they actually have substance. They actually carry weight in the spirit. Your weight in the spirit, your weight, you know, when someone weighty comes into the room, you can feel it. You can feel this person has been with God because of their intimacy with God. Not how sinful, sinless they are, but their intimacy with God. But listen to verse 3. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord. I'm I'm intimate with God. I'm spending time with God. I know that I'm in Christ. I've been raised up together in Christ in heavenly places. That's where I'm seated. That's where I am. Even though I sin, I'm still with Christ. Even though I may sin, I'm still righteous. That's not going to change. Like Noah when he was in the ark. Noah was in the ark and God made sure that the windows of the ark were high up that no one could see outside. He would, that they were high up. God made sure the windows were so high that um, no one could fall out of the ark. But even though the winds the winds and the waves of the flood will come and Noah sometimes maybe would stumble and fall down even though he'd stumble and fall down he's falling down inside the ark some of you have stumbled we've all stumbled we've all fallen but let me tell you if you have been if you have been saved by grace you have stumbled and fallen in the ark you are still in christ that will not change but now verse 2 he says i will say of the lord and that's what i want to drive home today i will say of the lord what you say of god god what are you saying of god your conversation and profession of god of the lord your profession of what god has done in is doing in your life determines the quality of your life the quality of your life is determined by your sayings of what the lord is doing you, we need to be skilled and eloquent in the language of faith be skilled in the language of faith second corinthians 4 verse 13 bible says we have the same spirit of faith like david we believe therefore we speak the spirit of faith says we believe therefore we speak if you are a believer you got to speak there's no such thing as believing without speaking if you believe in the protection of god for your life you got to release it by speaking as long as faith is locked up in your heart and not formed in your mouth faith is of no effect in your life faith must be released by the words that we speak become eloquent in the language of faith become eloquent you know like a doctor would use his scalpel 
a doctor knows exactly where to cut he's he's not haphazard but he, he like he's skilled he cuts at the right place our tongues need to be like the, the scalpel of a doctor cutting the right places with the word a double-edged sword in our mouths cutting the right place let me tell you the level of word in your life is the level of faith that you have faith is equal to the word word level is faith level faith level is word level my wife and i were talking um last night again and she said um she was talking about how the mountain you face the mountain that you are unable to conquer is a direct indicator of the level of faith that you're operating in or the level of word you're operating in in other words your goliath comes to prove whether the word within you is greater than the fight with the fight that you're facing do you understand what i'm saying today your giant comes to expose the level of word that's on the inside of you learn to say of the lord to speak well of him learn to speak to the mountain it's amazing when david ran against goliath in uh the, the where is this in first samuel first samuel i'm lying is it first samuel yes it is first samuel chapter 17 verse 41 the bible says david he ran and he said today today this day i will cut off your head and feed your carcass to the birds notice how david didn't say this day father i thank you that you are going to deliver this giant into my head no he did not even speak to god he, he didn't talk to god about it. he ran up against goliath and said today today way not way not today i will cut your head off today and that's what faith that's how faith talks many of us are asking god to do things that he's already done oh lord i pray that you give me the god says i don't have it i've already given it to you so you run up against goliath and say this day i'll cut your head off hallelujah are you blessed today you learned something today i pray that you've been blessed by the word today um that truly the protection of God will be activated in your life by the word you speak. When you step out, when you step out to go do, go about your day, to go work or taking your kids to school, whatever you, you will be doing. Okay, schools are closed in South Africa at this time. But whatever you're doing throughout your day, as you put your protective mask on and everything, sanitize your hands and you become socially responsible and everything you need to do in the natural. But don't you dare step out of your house without declaring the protection of God saying the Lord I will say of the Lord he is my refuge today I'm saying God is my refuge today no corona touches me today today no accidents today every time I every time I step behind the car my my father taught me from a very young age my dad taught me Reverend Isaac M20 that when you step behind the wheels of a car any car you step into declare there shall be no accidents there shall be no mechanical breakdowns there shall be no calamity no calamity shall befall me I will enter safely where I'm going in Jesus name I declare what i want to see today i declare that today i receive a promotion today my phone will bring good news today emails are coming with good news with increase with promotion today the doctor is calling with good news today my phone i'm expecting my phone i prophesy to my phone i prophesy to my communication systems i prophesy to my ears you will receive good news today no bad news will come psalms 112 verse 1 i will fear no bad news in jesus name good things are coming your way in jesus name by your heads close your eyes where you are father i release the blessing of god over your people as they've been listening to the word right now i pray father as they apply the word that father you would break every work of the devil i break it now in jesus name every work of satan in your life is destroyed i uproot that seed of disaster that seed of ruin i uproot that seed of divorce in your marriage in jesus name protection and preservation over your marriage now in the name of jesus preservation over your life now in jesus name you're stepping into a new realm a realm of authority you step into a new realm of protection a new realm of confidence i declare that you are raised up with christ right there where you are would you lift up your hands and confess with me pray with me say father forgive me for looking at myself through eyes of the flesh i repent for not seeing myself the way you see me and so today in the name of jesus as i change my mind change the way i see myself 
Allow me to see others the way you see them. Give me a tongue that is ready to preach the gospel. Give me a heart that will see the lost. A heart that will beat for the lost. Thank you that I'm well able. Thank you that I'm a father and a mother of many nations. Thank you that you have called me today. You empower me today to preach the gospel. To deliver those who are bound. To set the captives free. Thank you for your protection over my life. Thank you for your protection over my family. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. In Jesus name. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Pray with me right now if you want to be saved. I don't care what you've done. How many times you've done it. God will forgive you. He'll change you. Give you a new beginning right now. Let's pray together. Say Father God. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus was buried. And Jesus rose again. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. That Jesus is the Lord of my life. And right now. As I believe and receive you Jesus. You give me the right. To be called a child of God. Wash away my sins. Make me brand new. Amen and amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer for the first time, please let us know. Send us the email and you see the details at the bottom right there so that we can, we can just help you grow in the things of God. Well, God bless you. We're going to see you next week, same time. Would you stay safe? Stay safe and stay protected. Have no fear. We are the fearless generation. Fearless generation because our God takes care of us. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Rich signing out. See you next time. Bye-bye. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Say, oh.